Got to see them at concert. Amazing. Amazing. Let me just get finished setting up here this morning. Because, as you can see, it's always a new angle. This way I can read and see and talk to the camera and not be antisocial. Because, you know, hey. Hey. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. I am always on time, typically. Thank you very much. I try. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. We have a ton to talk about. The reason for the different angle this morning is because I really need to get close up as what we're doing. Um, and I need to be able to get that camera around. Because you know what? Here at the SAS, we're old school. <laughs> and I'll explain more of that in a minute. Can you show us your shirt design? This is from Ashley Dodd, and the name of her store, you ready for this, is Aparicium. That is right. That is the proper way to say Ashley Dodd's design. So before we get started, let me properly introduce this show. This is the SAS for Sunday, uh, February 9th. Um, I think it's the 9th. Yeah, it sounds good. Anyway, my shirt design this morning is from Ashley Dodd, and her store is called Aparicium company. Um, I believe it's the proper name, but I know it's Aparicium because I've been practicing how to say that all week. So booyah, I got a leverage. I said it right live for everybody. She'll be so proud of me. Yay. So this is what my design is. I try to wear a different design from one of our designers um, and try to showcase those. So you can find her over in our graphics group. It's a really cool shirt. And you know what? I am not a Southern at all, but I will look at somebody and go, bless your heart, as I'm shaking my head and thinking, God, you're pretty. <laughs> I'm obsessed with mason jars. Me too. All right. So I'm going to turn the camera. Swipe left. There we go. I want to be able to see everything, so I need to get this all set. So we're going to break it down this morning as to what we're going to talk about. Um, I just want to make sure my camera angle, because I'm going to be switching this. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things. Um, give me one second. Whoops. I feel as if my camera's a little crooked today. Here we go. A little better. Okay. Sorry. You know what? It wouldn't be a sub and more if we don't have some sort of technical camera issues. But here at the SAS... I tried for literally four hours last night to get different camera angles, use the different software programs that the other three use, and I gotta tell you, we're gonna be kicking it old school until I figure it out. It will always be just the one camera, me and you. Um, I, I can't do this multi-camera thing. It's just not working. The lag time is literally like 45 seconds between from when I say something to when you guys see it, and it makes absolutely the biggest pain to deal with. So, we're just gonna kick it old school. One camera, one Nikki, and one sass. So there you go. And Billy is at the ready this morning. I love when he checks in with me in the morning. We talk about it. What are you gonna talk about? So he has my links ready. Always, 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 always. Good morning, all set up and I'm watching on TV. Oh geez. You know, it always scares me when people tell me they're watching me on their TVs because I'm thinking that's a whole lot of Nikki to fill in one screen. Oh, okay. So today is all about piecing and pressing in your heat press and how you can line up different designs, especially if you have a smaller press, because let's be honest, you either got the Sawgrass 400 and you can only press a eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14, or you have a 15 by 15 press. Not everyone has the larger printers and the larger presses. Why? Because if you're first starting out, you went with what was economical for your budget. But that doesn't mean it should stop you from doing everything in between, okay? I had to learn that right out of the gate because I too has, still have my Sawgrass 400 and I still can piece to this day. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to get proper piecing so that you too can do different things. Um, 
I have some patterns printed off that are crazy busy, but the reason for that is, is because they're camera friendly. I'm gonna show you some tools that you should use and what you could do beforehand. So let's get started. It's gonna seem crazy. So today we're going to press a gator. We're gonna press a, we're gonna press actually two socks. And the reason being is I'm gonna use my straight jig and we're gonna talk about that. I'm also, for the very first time live, I'm going to use the um, hockey jig, but I'm not gonna use the hockey jig in the way you think you should be using the hockey jig to press a sock. We're gonna flip it. Let's see if it works because you know what? They've discontinued the straight jig. So I'm gonna see if we can't use the hockey jig and then that way you guys can all run out, get your hockey jigs and still be able to press socks. So let's get to it. Do, 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 do. And I have to say a happy good morning to my little sister who was watching yet again for like the fourth Sunday in a row. <laughs> all right, so here's some things I want you guys to think about. I have got lots and lots and lots and lots of gators, blankets, socks, you name it, okay? I wanna show you some different things. I'm gonna just pull it all over because it's sitting on my other spot. I will be showing you my table, so don't worry about that. So here's some things for proper piecing. Now, you could kick it old school and go scissors, but I'm gonna tell you right now, there's not a steady hand on this earth that's gonna cut an absolute straight line. It just doesn't happen, okay? Some tools that will definitely help you, and I'm gonna explain why one is better than the other, especially because I've used one for so long. So when I first started, I was kicking it again, old school, we're old school here at the SAS, your typical teacher, I call these the teacher paper cutters, okay? They're the ones that look like you're gonna kill somebody in the guillotine. These were okay, but I couldn't get a proper cut, and here's why, I couldn't see what the heck I was doing. So I went in search. I went in search for a better um, cutter for me. And that's when I found this at Michael's. It flips up, okay? And I can see where I'm lining things up so I can make sure that it's absolutely straight. I can make sure that it gets right in the gutter where it needs to be. This has been my lifesaver. So this I got at Michael's. I know you can get them at any craft store um, because this is actually sold in a scrapbooking section if you go and look for it. And try to get the biggest one you can get. Spend a little money, people. If you want, if you're gonna be doing paper piecing for your sawgrass, you need a good, decent cutter. This is great. You can actually change the blades out of these. That's really a nice feature in this. Um, this also has this. Let me see if I can pop it out because, you know, I can never do it correctly. So if you need to guide your paper, you can. And it has it so it stands. I don't ever use that part of it because my designs aren't that all big. So this is where you start. This is key. Okay. Um, thank you. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's get to, we're gonna press the gaiters, the flags, because there's tips and tricks for those. We're gonna press the, um, the sock jig. Here's, here's what we're gonna be doing. So here's the sock jig, all right? All I did was I flipped it. My only concern is there's a hole up here, so I'm gonna go in and put in um, a little bit of paper so that it doesn't bleed through, but I actually might press it without doing that. Why? Because I need to know. I need to know, do I have to take the extra time to put a piece of paper where that hole is? So we're gonna do that together. These are really easy. Don't let these fool you. You can actually use cardstock as well. Um, I'm using the cardstock for my gaiters today. Um, I say cardstock, I meant poster board. Poster board, double layer your poster board and you can still get the same effect. It's the same thickness and it still works the same. And you know what, They're, it's cheap and it's easy. You can use cardboard. Um, the only reason I use the, car, the poster board is because I can get white and it just, it's cheap. Um, and I can cut it to size a lot better than I can cut my cardboard. So there's some food for thought. So this is what we're gonna do. Okay, it's slightly different in size. So I'm gonna see if how much that affects the design. It shouldn't, we'll see. We're gonna do that part together because they've discontinued the straight jig, okay? So the designs for the sock jig, I need to put this out there, is are from Margo. I love these funky designs. I need to also make sure that you guys understand that when you print these out, you can print them out too. 
okay? Um, and what you want to do is you want to mirror one of these images because, I don't know about you, but I want my images to match up when, whoops, right. What yeah, that's right. <laughs> so when they go to flip and they sandwich together, I have that wrong. I have the wrong one. Sorry, I have so many of these cut right now. All right, so here we go. This is how you want it, all right? You want to be able so that they all meet up at the proper spot. So you're going to want to mirror one of these. So you print, you put this, and then you mirror this one all in the same piece if you're going to print it if you have a larger printer. If you don't have a larger printer and you're doing smaller socks, you still want to mirror one of these bad boys. Okay, so you have one and mirror the other, especially for Margot's design, because you want them when they pair up, you want those seams to meet. Okay, so there's just something that I am just anal about and people don't necessarily think about or notice. So look at the pattern before you print it. Put one right next to it. Literally in your screen, I want you to take her design and put it there. Now plop one right next to it. If the patterns aren't matching, or they look like they're supposed to wrap around, then flip one of them. It should look like a continuous look. Okay, and if it doesn't, then you gotta fix that, okay? She's really good about making those designs. I mean, she is the queen of the socks. So those, that's just one, one trick. Yes, we're gonna use the ones that she has that has the rounded. I'm not gonna care because actually the hockey jig is smaller um, than this, so I'm just gonna print it. I didn't crop it or anything. So we're going to be doing that. Um, let's see. Just quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to, I need to practice. So I am going to get my camera right where it needs to be. And I'm going to show you the best way to practice before you actually press on your substrate. Okay. So let's move the camera. And let's move everything out of the way so that you guys can get a nice close-up version of this madness. All right. And we're going to lower it just a little. And there's a reason for this. So I'm going to take, and, and as I was doing this, I have to tell you, I had a think outside the box moment. Um, all right. So there you go. Ashley, I said your store correctly, by the way. I just need to just point that out because I just saw that she's on. All right, so here's this. You need to learn how to do proper piecing. So what I did was I took a bib design and a burp cloth design and shrunk them down. Do you know what these look like to me? That is correct. You could put these on baby dolls. So you now can make Dolly and Me ones. Um, but you can make the, you know, the dolly one. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you how to properly piece this and we're going to press it and you're gonna like, what the heck are you going to press it on? We are going to test print on felt. Why? Felt is cheap. You can go buy it by the yard and that's the best place when you're trying to learn how to properly piece a design is to print it on felt first. Why waste a beautiful substrate while you're still learning? Okay, so make sure you guys can still see everything I'm doing. Aparicium! There you go, Ashley Dodd. I said it correctly yet again. I've been practicing that all week. <laughs> okay, so here's what you want to do. You definitely want to make sure that when you're cutting this, this cuts completely on the edge. You want to leave paper here and leave paper here. You don't want to cut your design up close because this is where you're going to tape it. You never tape your design in the middle, ever, okay? Also, if your substrate, and I'm going to explain that when we go to the press, if your substrate is bigger than your press, you never press, like if you have to press double press, never double press on a seam, okay? Because that's just going to cause attention, call attention to that design. Okay, so we're going to get this all up there. Woohoo! Yup, I'm the first one that's actually said Ashley Dodd's thing correctly. I ain't going to lie, though. She totally sent me a thing to cheat. <laughs> and I have been practicing all week. Okay, so this is locked and loaded. 
we're going to get this so this is right where I want it to be. Okay, it's all lined up. Okay, and if you have just a little bit, you don't want that. You really want to make sure that this is nice and see how I did that. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go through and clear off these threads because I totally tried jerry-rigging it. Now remember, this is just testing, so don't bite my head off. Okay? So, the nice part, too, is where I decided to split my design wasn't anything, so if you look at it, all right, it's not going to really be too much, oh, you know, whoops, sorry. Where I decided to, to master this, sorry, I'm trying to learn this all together, is where... Remember, you're practicing cutting and you're practicing piecing. So these are going to be smaller. That's the point of them. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. All right. No, you do not. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut this back part off. You do not want any paper overlapping. That is key in all this. No paper overlapping. Okay, so you want this. You're going to tape it here and you're going to tape it here. All right, so let's get this cut. Put it in the well. You want a little bit off the edge in the well, just so that you know it goes, snap it down, and there you go, okay? Set this aside. Make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. Perfect, okay? So what you're gonna do, okay, when you're piecing a design, now, you want this to be right up against each other, okay? And then you wanna tape it over to the side don't tape it under your design and tape it over to the side. So leave that little bit of space, okay? Because when you go to piece it, you want it to bleed into itself, okay? So you make sure that it'll bleed right into itself. Now, I notice because of the lighting in my shop right now, I notice that there's a little bit of a white edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really make sure that when I go to actually do it, I make sure that I cut just a little bit more. We'll practice again on this one. Paper's cheap, people, and so is felt. And I would much rather you get down your art before you ruin your substrate. Okay? So there's that one. So now let's piece this one. Ready? Say it with me. Aparicium. That's right. I have, I'm one up on all the boys, even. Okay? So, again... You want to make sure that you put it in the well, okay? And if you're unfamiliar where your well is, you can always go like this and see, and you can go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, you know, put your nail in there. This way, you know, it's all lined up. Perfect cut that time. Okay, so that's a perfect cut. Now you want to flip this over, give it another perfect cut. All right. Make sure that you're in your well. And I always use my nail. And, and the reason being is because then I can make sure that there's, it's lined up exactly where I want it. Okay. Again, this is just a dolly and me size. But you know what? Because we have to practice, why ruin something so beautiful for me just to learn? Okay. So we're going to get down in here. And it's a perfect fit. Okay. Again, you're not going to want to put any tape in the printed area. No tape printed area if you're going to master this. Okay. Whoops. Make sure it doesn't spread either. Okay. There you go. That is now properly pieced. So far are we good? I find a cut straighter if the paper is all the way at the bottom. That too. However, whatever works for you. I've just gotten really good at this. So over time. So this is your felt. You can go buy it by the yard, okay? This is also great when you want to learn how to piece a design together when and just make it smaller. Like I said, paper and ink for practice is a lot cheaper than if you sit here and you keep ruining substrate after substrate after substrate. The reason I say felt is because it's in the middle of the road. You can also you get poly or uh, poly fabric so that it kind of has that feel for more of the neoprene tops to them so you'll know how that prints because it's going to print a little bit differently on felt as it is on velour on anything else but this is a good test practice for you to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay these two down so i know that i have you know what waste not want not 
So far, so good. All right. So come up and just make yourself a square. And I get the thicker felt because it'll act more like the baby bibs Stan has. I will add a little bit of tape just to hold it down as if it was just had a bib under here. And when you're done, you can actually go through and cut this all out and make it into a dolly and me type set. Another upsell. Um, for those who don't want to sew, felt is a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's give it a little, little tape, a little love. All right. Right now, I'm not worried about whether or not I've lint rolled or anything of that because I'm not worried about that. I know I have to lint roll, but this is so that we can get it properly pressed. All right, I'm going to go over. Let me get my act together here. Give me one second and we'll show it to you. Okay. So now we have it on my heat press. All right. On the heat press, I like to make me a sandwich. All right, so everything is here. Remember, there is no tape on that center line. All right, you never want that. And you're gonna flip. Now I'm gonna do just like my normal settings, and it's gonna be 385 for 65. I'm gonna do medium to heavy pressure because that's what I do. All right, and we're gonna just drop it. Okay, while this is baking or something, to call it something, I'm gonna flip this up so y'all can see me. Hi there, whoopsies. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is let this bake off, all right? And it's going to do what it needs to do in process. But in the meantime, print off a couple of them. And here's why. You have a sheet of paper, print off squares, print off circles, print off whatever you want. Now you're gonna ask me, how do I cut one of your designs, Nikki? Almost every design program, okay? I say almost, and I'm not gonna tell you where to find it. Google it, YouTube it, but find the knife tool or the splicing tool, whatever you call it. I know it's called the knife tool in Corel. Um, how to be able to cut the design in half. So start Googling and start YouTubing those terms based on the design program that you have. Because all you want to do is just cut your design in half so that it fits your eight and a half by 11. So that means you can buy any design if you can just cut it in half. So learn how to do that. That's going to be key, okay? Change my camera angle. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, we're gonna pull this off the press. Now let's see how I did, all right? This might be something that we have to practice again, all right? But because it's a practice, it's okay. All right, so here I got it. This is a great example because I didn't cut it correctly on my, my um, and this is why you practice. This is huge, people, huge. Do you see that line? That's because when I did it, I did not cut it exactly straight. So you want to cut it straight. But if you notice, it, I did much better on this one. Okay, give me thumbs, some thumbs up. Thumbs up, people. If you understood and you understand why we need this for practicing. Heart, show me some love. Okay, so look. This is why you want to make sure that you cut it straight and you cut it so that it's absolutely just there. I mean, I hope you guys can all see that line. Um, but this is why you practice. All right. This is huge. So then you would go through and do it all over again. Why? Because you want to master this before you go and put it on a bib. So now we're going to go put it on a bib. I have not pieced, I have to tell you, since I got my Sawgrass 800. So... I only, I, I very rarely piece now. All right. So now we're going to go piece and we're going to go big. Let's do this. Let's see if Nikki can just mess this up on live television just like I normally do. All right. Awesome sausages. So you've mastered it at this point. If you notice, my friend Becky and I were talking about how crazy busy this design is. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I needed for you to be able to see it, have it be crazy busy, and, and do this. You get all of your sub blanks for today um, through Hailbound 
and through Coney Island. Um, those are the different places that you get those from. Again, you want to leave paper on either side. Yes, all my southern friends love my shirt today. Now, if it doesn't fit, yes, trim it. All right? Trim it. You want it to fit. All right? So, trim this down just a little so it fits on my board. Okay? Slider in. And get it all lined up. Take your time. All right? Rome was not built in a day, people. So don't think that this is going to be something that you're going to be able to rush through. And if you're rushing through it, then you know what? You've got greater push issues. Okay? Let's see, did I do it? Perfect! Okay, perfect. I ain't going to lie. I'm kind of nervous because I haven't pieced in forever. Okay? We're going to, again, trim up my paper. Nothing like live TV, Nick. Stan always picks on me. He goes, you know. There you go. So, now, again, put it in. Line it up. This takes practice, people. This is not something that you should be fighting with. Especially if you've got that smaller printer. I mean, I'm not going to fault you for the smaller printer. I had the smaller printer. Perfect. Did she line it up right? Let's see. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, I don't really need this lot of extra at the bottom. I'm already extra enough. I don't need to have extra. That was for Angie, by the way, because we always say how extra I am. <laughs> Oh, Lord. All right. So. Now you've got it lined up, right? Do, 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 do. You want to sit here, play with your design, make sure it's completely lined up. Mine is spot on. Now let's hope it presses correctly. Okay. My cutting is spot on. Where you become, this can sometimes separate. You want to butt this up so tight together, smooth it out, okay? So I notice there's a little bit of white on this one. I might just come in here and just ever so slightly, because you don't want that edge. Okay, I'm going to hide that. Okay. So far, are we good? Nervous. I'm sweating bullets over here, people. Now, all of my templates come from Stan. Look at, oh, I cannot wait to press this, actually. Because this is going to be, this is actually coral and teal. And those for who, who have heart failure, it looks navy blue and pink. This is actually coral and teal. It's a design that I made. Um, you can find that. Um, this you can't find on my Etsy shop. You will be able to find it on my Etsy shop because it's just amazingly pretty. Um, even if it is completely over the top. Um, but for the sake of our live, you get it all. Oh, because Jen's watching and she's going to yell at me. This will be a conversation after. There, Jennifer, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. <sighs> That's right. Got to be extra around here. All right. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, welcome to the sass, right? All right. So now it's all laid the way you want it. All right. I could use Pro Spray. I am going to tell you, I've been using tape for so long that I rarely use Pro Spray. Sounds terrible, but I'm just not a Pro Spray girl, I guess. Um... I use it, but I don't use it like everybody else does. And yes, I will tape the living daylights out of this bib. And yes, you could use it, but because I have a um, clamshell, 
press, I like to make sure that my stuff is down because when you go to pull that up and it goes whoosh, it picks everything up. I don't want this to pick up. All right, so this is why I do all of this, okay? You know, the tape will mess with the design if it's not pressed right. What are you talking about, Beck? No, you cannot put tape on the back of your design. You literally only want tape on the edge, okay? You don't need to put it, you don't need to flip this over. No tape here, because here's the thing. If I go to put tape here, I don't know if it's on the other side, if it's into my design. So I just avoid it. Only tape it on the front and right here. You're not gonna need it. If you notice, this is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful piece of information. All right, so that's why I do what I do, okay? So call it crazy, call it whatever you want. I don't care. Just don't call me late for dinner. Um, and the, and the burp cloths are gonna work the same way. You cut your image so that it's, you know, you can press it and you can put it on your press. So here's this, we're gonna get our protective paper out. All right, let me get this over onto my press and then we'll come on over and I'll move it up. Get that all there. Yeah. As you can see. So the steps that you want to take, again, for this, is you want to obviously lint roll the living heavens out of it. And I find that this lint roller works amazing on Stan's baby blankets, on his bibs. And here's why. This is a velour. So when you take two pieces of like a velour or velvet and you rub them together, it's going to pull that off. So this is why I like this one. I've been using this for months now. I use my sticky lint roller on other things like shirts and whatnot. You can use this, but this works phenomenal on the baby blankets, the bibs, um, burp cloths, anything that has a really nice fuzzy texture. This works beautifully. Okay. So we have this in here. What you're going to do, protective paper down, your bib face up, transfer face down, protective paper, okay? Yes, I have a Teflon sheet. I've talked about this a gazillion times in past sasses. You always want, this is so it protects this foam, because I want to protect my foam. I don't need some sort of, if it happens to off gas, living in my foam, and then it gets on a white substrate. So I put the Teflon sheet down. Always put your protective paper down because that's what's going to absorb all of this ink that might come off. Okay, so there's that. And there you go. So now you have made your bib sandwich. Okay, we're going to drop this down. I have a magic number that I use and it's 385 for 65. Okay, hi there. So I use it for 385 for 65. It's what I've been using absolutely for a lot of my substrates because it's what works for me. Now, as I've said in past sasses, you use the times and temps that are given to you as a guideline. And then you have to work with your press, your printer, your climate. And then you work from there. But you always need a set of guidelines to build off of. Okay, so we've got about 30 seconds. Um, and we're going to see what you guys are asking me. You can get this um, anywhere. <laughs> I got mine on Amazon. Why? Because I do a lot of shopping on Amazon. So it's a velvet lint roller, double-sided. Um, it's made by 3M. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I can use it on absolutely everything if I wanted to, but I have both. Like I said, this is great for stand stuff. I find it really pulls any of the, the lint out of those fibers because it's fiber against fiber. So that's why. All right, let's move this out of the way. Remember, we kick it old school here because we're a one camera show. <laughs> I giggle. I really giggle at that. Add new technology, they said. It'll be fun. Said no one ever. All right. Let's get this. We're going to take this off together. Okay. So now you have this. All right. And you come through and you start to. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness.
there's a slight little line but for me and it'll be because I'm doing this live because that's just how it always works right I get to show you all of my mess ups so you guys can go back through and go haha I didn't do that ha what what line there's no line did you just see what I just did that's right watch ready you guys are gonna laugh at me so there is a line and I'll show it to you. We're going to do this together. I mean, come on. Seriously? That thing is gorgeous. Becky, I trump you. Okay. So you see how there's that slight line? Watch what this velvet lint roller does. Okay. It has these little arrows on it. So go in the direction of the arrow. Go up. Okay. And then you can come down just ever so slightly. But if you come down at an angle, you're less likely to see it. But... If you just pick it up right there. Uh, what line? That's right. Whoop, whoop. What line, people? Isn't that gorgeous? Uh-huh. It is stunning. I mean, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I am in love with Stan's baby blankets. And if anybody knows me, they know that I am not one to lie. <laughs> about stuff. Um, if I don't like it, I'm not going to press it and I'm not going to do it. So that's just huge. But check that out. All right. I still would have to practice it. it and I'll show you. I mean, I'm going to be honest. So this one, I didn't I remember how I said you want to slightly overlap it up here. This is almost dead on perfect. This one is where, you know, it wasn't exactly maybe just a touch and I mean, just a hairline overlapped, and it would have been perfect. But otherwise, I'm happy with it. And if I just, there you go. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Stan does have a website. Um, Jen is on right now, and so is Billy. And they'll, either one of them will link their his page. And his is Coney Island Transfers. Dot, Coney Island Transfer dot com. Sorry. There we go. So it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. So let's continue, shall we? All right. So now we've pieced this. All right. Like I said at the top, you want to practice. Do not put tape on that middle section. I know you're gonna, your gut reaction is going to want to, but you're going to end up with a tape mark. And if you would like to test out my theory, you guys can absolutely go ahead and if you want to do it on a substrate, go ahead and ruin it. I'm okay with that too. Um, but this is key, all right? This is absolutely, this is absolutely key, is practicing on felt first. That's why you have it. It's great for testing out any design for any substrate so you can at least see how it prints. If you're unsure of colors, anything like this, because this felt is really inexpensive. But it also is a great way to show samples. So, again, think outside the box. Print what it would look like on your beautiful substrate. Then you could put this in a card catalog type of thing, and then people can actually see what it looks like printed. All right? Because if you show them on paper or you show them on a screen, you're going to end up with two totally different things. You could put these in page protectors, and there you go. Then people can actually flip through a binder and say, I want that. There's your think outside the box moment. All right, moving right along. Now, we're going to move on to piecing a baby blanket. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Now, I'm going to show you the design. All right, this is already printed. This is the design. So now when you're looking at a design, I want you to look at it where the best possible place is to put your cut line. Where's the less likely spot you're going to notice that you've pieced it together? For me, all right, I literally went right here. Why? Because most of this is just dead space anyway. And I can piece this N and this L or this Y together really simply. If I were to come right through here, that is asking for it to be a disaster. So find your spot. So this design is a 12 by 10. All right. And so I'm going to piece it right here. So let's move this aside. I 
I don't use spray. I mean, I don't use it all the time, but you can. You can absolutely use spray. A lot of people do. I am not knocking the whole spray thing. Um, I just don't, and it's all about preference. It has nothing to do with whether, you know, it's just because I just don't. All right. So you want to line this up to where on here, again, Okay, so now it's all lined up, all right? Now I'm gonna go and through and do it on this side. Okay, oops, I need to cut a little bit off the end just because it's a little bit big for my paper cutter, which is fine, that's dead space, all right? Line her up, get it so that now, what I also tend to do, too, is I follow my shadows. Because the shadows are going to help you, believe it or not. Okay. Okay. Put that aside. If you don't line it up perfectly the first time, you're kind of SOL. Absolutely. All right. So, let's see. There it is. What did I do? Oh, there's the Y. <laughs> Sorry, I apparently don't know how to spell. Okay. So you want a less inconspicuous spot. Whoops. Okay. Remember, take your damn time. Line these up as best as you possibly can. If you're rushing this, then this is not the job for you. Don't do big projects. If you feel like you need to rush, don't do big projects. It's really that simple, okay? Um, this is an art form that you need to master, okay? So, I am making this for a gift. So, what I am going to do is I'm going to press it on felt. Um, again, because I want to make sure that this is... And then I'm going to show you actually how to press normally on once you've pieced it together all right so again get your handy dandy felt out lay it out because you want to see how it presses it is worth its weight in gold to see how something presses on felt first before you ruin a baby blanket all right because baby blankets are just time consuming they're not hard they're just time consuming when you have smaller printers. Okay, they're not hard, and I repeat that again, they're not hard, they're just time consuming. Okay, so again, add a little bit of tape or your spray, which I could go do the spray if y'all wanted me to, but it's right here and I don't feel like moving outside. So, there's your answer for that. All right, so I give it some spots to where I tape it down. All right. Until you're happy with the alignment. Well, you can. Where did you find your tape holder? I got my tape holder from Johnson Plastics Plus. Um, you can get them anywhere, really. Okay, so I'm going to put my protective paper down. I'm going to test out this real quick. We're going to throw this on the heat press. Let it do its thing. All right. In the meantime... We're going to start thinking and planning on how you're going to lay out your next design, which happens to be the baby blanket. So this is how you're going to actually do this because the baby blankets are 30 by 40. All right. I'm going to end up laying these out. So what I want to do is I'm going to put these through the paper cutter or you can actually hand print them. And then that's fine too. You can hand cut these ones because this is, you're not piecing these ones. All right. I just want to give it a nice crisp edge. Um, this is where you can get away with doing it hand cut because you're going to be pressing individually anyway. You're not pressing all of these all the same time. So just keep that part in mind. Um, so you have these. All right, this design is absolutely stunning. You're so welcome, Zach. Thank you. You know what? 
I always wonder. I always wonder if you guys get enough out of these and if this is, if it's helpful. So, I always wonder if I help you somehow. All right. Oh, you goofball. Hold on. We're not even going to discuss what I did. <laughs> We're just going to just go repress that. We'll talk about what I did after. This is why you practice. <laughs> so now we're going to get into, while we're making that, oh boy, I'm not even going to tell you what I did. You guys are going to giggle. So now you've got these absolutely soft baby blankets. Okay. This is a tricky beast in the sense of how are you going to lay it out? Okay. So for me, all right, I lay it out. Now, for this one, I will go back through, all right, and I'm gonna add a piece in between. So this will get here and here, because I don't like to press up onto here, all right? I'm gonna have an image in here of roses in the, in the design, so that's another design, but I'm gonna put that here. When I'm pressing a blanket, and I've done this in past tutorials, I work down the left side, Okay, I shift over my image and then I work down the middle and then I shift over my image and I work down the right. Hold on. And actually I probably did it this way when I did my image. Yeah. You can do it either way. It really doesn't matter. All right, you just have to lay this out. So this, if you're wondering what the print size is, so they're 30 by 40, right? This is about an inch here. So you've got to take off two inches. So now you're down to 28. And the same here, all right? You take about an inch off. So now you're down to 38. So you're doing really a 28 by 38 design, okay? So when you're pressing this out, this is how you do that, all right? So this is just as a test. So we can make sure that I cut it correctly, blah, 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 and you keep right on going, okay? A little off, but that's okay. That's why you practice. Yeah, why the angry faces? What did you, what did I do? That's just mean. Kill them with kindness. Um, so here is the design. Like I said, it started out as a blue and a, and a pink, and it's really a coral and a teal. Give me some thumbs up if you love it. Pretty, right? Uh, Lynn is not spelled incorrectly because this is how the client is spelling Lynn. Just so you know. trying to get her attention to the name spelled wrong. It's not. Nice try though. They're having OCD issues with Lynn being spelled two different ways. Here's my disclaimer. Her name is Gemma Lynn, and her mom is spelling her, her middle name Lynn, L-Y-N. I know how to spell. Thank you. I checked it out 500 times. She's a really good friend of mine um, who's expecting Gemma Lynn any day now. So it is spelled correctly based on mom's needs and how she decided to spell her daughter's middle name. Just like Nicole is completely spelled wrong in my world. Um, because I'm spelled N-I-C-H-O-L-E. There are lots of different spellings for names, but I do thank you guys for trying to help. Um, I do appreciate you. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Good call, whoever said that. But watch, ready? Hold. So you guys, I see what you're saying. But this is the right way to spell it. I'm just so you know. Okay, good call. But watch. Watch. There you go. Problem 
solved. There's no end. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Are you guys done? No. <laughs> oh my God. When they're done screaming at me <laughs> and I fixed it based on what they were telling me, okay, fine. But it, when they're done, I would like a million and one hearts that you guys have. have thank you. I got it. <laughs> Can you guys give me some hearts now? Jeez Louise. My good gosh. How to make an uproar. Spell the name Lynn wrong on a piece of paper. This is why we practice. We then look over the design. <laughs> That's okay. This is why it's on felt. Good call, guys. All right. Are we good? Are we good? Are you guys all not panic stricken now? <laughs> I'm going to fix it on this one too because I want to press this one too. So this is an easy save and paper's cheap. And I do have to apologize because here's the thing. I literally was designing this at 2.30 this morning. So I apologize. <sighs> I know it's all. Listen, Zach. It wouldn't be a sass if I didn't screw one thing or ten things up in any given day. This is how we keep it real here on the sats because Nikki is bound and determined to mess something up at some point in time during her life. And you know what? I have wasted a lot of substrates teaching you guys because you know what? It means that I'm human and it shows that I make mistakes. And a lot of times I'm designing stuff for you guys to do on the sats at 2.30 in the morning. Um... This one was a great save. I understand you are, but you don't need to beat me up for it either. Um, because you know what? It's human. All right. So I'm definitely human. <laughs> um, so we're going to get to this one. <laughs> oh, it's Sunday and it's success. And let me tell you, the sass squad is in full force this morning. All right. So, like I said, I don't like to put, I do not put that spray on these blankets. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't like using the poly spray on the blankets. Um, I just am not a fan of it on here. Oh, crap. You know what I forgot to do? Sounds good gracious. Good gravy. We got all sorts of sidetracked. The Sasquad is in full force. Okay. What do you mean I'm taping it wrong? Oh God, here we go again. Uh, thank you, Zach. All right. All right. So my image says Gemma Lynn Haberlin, because I can see it through the paper. And this is how this is going to be. We're going to press this one. All right. You knew I have said something. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I did. I totally caught that, Jen. No, no, that's okay. I can see. I here's the beautiful part about this. I know what you're saying. Thank you, Pat. Um, no, um, I'm redesigning the whole blanket. This was just to show you guys how you do it. Um, it's cool though. It's really cool. Um, so the, for this one, I'm going to put it here and I will put a design here and then I'm going to put another design here. Um, but for this tutorial, <laughs> Um, I'm going to do this one and I'm going to come down and do my next one. Um, cause that's how I'm going to do it because you, you literally work. Let's see if you can see it. You work this way down on your press and then you come in and you work in your middle and then you come in and you work on your end because you don't want your heat press 
And here's the mythology behind it. You don't want your heat press to touch an image that you've already pressed. Okay, and the reason being is it's going to off gas again. It can cause some shadowing. It can cause um, some really funky things. So you want to press and then come down and then press and then come down and then slide your blanket over. Press and then come down so that this is not back under that heat press. All right, and we're, I'm going to show you that. I've showed this in past tutorials, but we're going to really hammer it out today. Still getting beaten up over the damn end. Okay. It's fabulous around here. <laughs> oh, Lord save me. I think y'all need to find Jesus. Leave room for Jesus. Okay. This blanket is 30 by 40. The design for me, what I want to do, because there's this one inch edge all the way around, is it's going to be 28 by 38, okay? Now, I like leaving this edge. It makes it look crisp. I don't like pressing over this edge because there's seams here. I'm not a fan of that. There's lots of bulk in these corners um, because of where how it's sewn and it's folded over. I don't want to deal with that madness of it. So I tend to literally go right into here, okay? And that's how I do that. So let's get to this here. All right. All right. All right. So let's get this to here so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. So now, whoops, it's going to slide off. Okay. So I have this on here. All right. It's all basically put down where you need it to be. Okay, you want it to be here. So when I go to do my next one, I'm literally going to have to slide this up. All right, so let me get another piece of protective paper. All right. Uh, okay. So now I have this all protected. Okay. There we go. All right. So again, I do it at 385 for 65. Follow what Stan's instructions are. This is what I found works for me because I make a ton of these blankets um, and whatnot. Have your protective paper down and we're going to drop it. Okay. So now that's where you have that. Now I have this laying out. You, some people do use a board. I don't have the space here to put one of those boards that you can just lay it out on and slide it. I don't have that luxury with the space in my shop. So for me, I literally lay it like this and then I'll cool it off and I'll show you what I do there. And then I move to the next spot. All right. So these are just how we're going to work it today. Let me see if we've got any questions. Hmm. So this is baking off. We're going to work on the next one. All right. And then we're going to work on the next design down. All right. Again, if you've pieced your design, sorry, <laughs> if you've pieced your design, what you're going to do is make sure you go through and make sure you have all your designs pieced the way you want them. Depending on whatever your printer is, you really want to just piece them together ahead of time so that when you're placing them, you know they're correct. Obviously check for spelling because we're human and we make mistakes. So check the, the spelling on things. And I'm glad you guys caught that. Um, so there's there's that. All right. Um, now, peel this off, slide this around, hope you guys can see it, okay, good, all right, so now, I know that my image has worked, and here's how I know this, one, my paper's a funky color, two, I can see all the ink, like I can actually read the image now, okay, take this off. There you go. So you sit here and it absolutely came out gorgeous. Now, what I want to do is take it off the press. And what I want to do is cool it down. 
Why? Because I'm going to end up shoving this up in the corner for when I want to do the next design. So I really want to cool this down because I don't want it to press and sit like this. Why? Because if it's still really warm, it can off gas. And we don't want that to happen. So you give it a quick cool down on the spot that you're working on. Okay, this is what I found works for me. You are going to find what works for you. This is just again a guide. All right. So we're going to come back over to our table. Give me one second. All right. So now I have this image. Okay. So now I have this image. I'm not worrying about press lines and anything like that because I can take my little handy dandy thing and go through and you can just fluff out the lines. Okay. However you choose. Okay. There's that. It pressed absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So I love how it pressed. Now I want to add my second image. I, for this design, I'm going to leave a gap. All right. Now you're wondering how does she know where to leave the gap? So I come down here. All right. And what I do, I mark it with a piece of tape. That image. Okay. Slide it down. And this should then fit. If I trim this up the way it's supposed to be trimmed. <laughs> okay, trim this all up. Make sure it's all, you want it nice and tight because again, you don't want this extra paper. Okay, so here's that mark that I did. All right, so now I want to get this in here and get it all lined up. Okay, so could I leave my tape? Sure, I could, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just reuse that tape because it happens to be my guide. All right. So line up your image. The way you want it. So far, are we good? Is this word art? Um, I actually made this. I made this design. Okay. So that's how you do that. Now we're going to go over to the press and I'm going to show you exactly how I put it on my press. Again, I have a tight space. You might have more space. And if you do, yay, because I am totally obvious. <laughs> All right. So let me just start to get this on here. All right, so when you have it on here, what I do is I end up literally shoving this madness down into here, all right, so that this does not get off gas. Now, I know that there's, so this is right at the edge of my press. I don't want this to get all off gas on here, okay? So that's how that sits. Take my piece of protective paper. I just got to move it over just a hair so it's on the press. And there you go. So now that's going to work. So remember when you're piecing a design together, whether you're actually piecing a paper or design or you're actually going to lay it out, lay your corners first. And like I said, put that little bit of tape where it marks so that you know where that middle image is going to go because you've already pressed your top one. Now you're going to come down and you want to make sure that it fits because it's a lot easier to reprint a piece of paper or trim a piece of paper than to try to have to ruin your substrate. So basically, Press your first corner, and if your first corner is where you want it and it's pressed, then you want to be able to lay them out so that they don't overlap and you don't run out of room. Now remember, blankets are not straight. I don't care which way you slice it and dice it, the blankets are not going to be straight. They're meant to stretch. So just keep that in mind when you're pressing. Okay, that's with any blanket on the market. It doesn't matter whose you use. 
that is tried and true. Corners are not going to be 100% perfect and mitered 100% correct. Again, that's okay because there's a bias and a non-bias to call it something, which means there's a stretchy side and a non-stretchy side. Okay. So we're going to pull this off. I'm going to angle this back over to here. We're going to put this on here. I love my table. I just have to tell you. Get this right in here and let's pull this off. One. Stan was asking how many viewers. <laughs> All right. There you go. I mean, isn't it pretty? So there you go. So now that's how you lay out a subway. This is called a subway design, by the way. Um, this is how you lay it out. So press this one, come down to the very end, lay your piece of paper, and I put a piece of tape as my top marker so that you can definitely see what you're doing. And then I laid this design so that it would absolutely, I knew for 100% fact that my next image would fit in this space, okay? And as I go, I'll keep working. I'm gonna put flowers down the center and then this will be over on the other side. So this is how I'm laying out this particular blanket. Gorgeous, right? It is so incredibly soft. We call them snuggle blankets. Um, Stan has a snuggle or a lovey blanket. So if you like Stan's baby blankets, he has a smaller version. It's 11 by 18. And the 11 by 18, um, you could call it a lovey because it's a smaller one. It's great for, you know, the little ones to carry around with them. Um, they could use it as a dolly and me because now their dolly has one and they have one um, because these are even great for toddlers. These aren't just made for babies. These will go right up. I mean, I had a toddler. I say toddler. She was five years old. By the time she was five years old and she still had one. So these are not just for babies. Now, also, this is a great time to tell you that these are also a great little lap blanket. For those who are doing chemotherapy treatments, um, I've made about four now for chemotherapy patients. And as everyone knows, I'm a cancer survivor. So um, this is a this is a heart thing. And I put some beautiful inspirational quotes on them. Um, just of that nature. But this is a great lap blanket for when you're sitting and doing chemotherapy. So don't just think that they're just for babies. These aren't just for babies. They do come in adult size, actually. And I own those. Um, how we doing so far? We good? Yay! All right, let's get onto the socks. Okay. Next up, socks, and this is where we're gonna press um, whether or not the the hockey puck or hockey one works. All right. Here we go. So there's two different types of jigs. There's the discontinued jig. All right, so, and I just happen to have the discontinued jig, and there's the non-discontinued jig. So now I'm trying to see if whether or not we're going to be able to use this jig, which is the only one you can get currently on the market, if we can use this jig without actually using the hockey. It is a little bit shorter, okay? But I'm going to see if how much it affects the design. So I'm going to press both the way I would have pressed it here on my normal one and then how we press it on this one. And if it comes out just the same, hurry, run out, get them because everybody's looking for them. OK, so let's get this all taped and ready to rock and roll. All right. So I'm going to put this is Margot's design and I'm going to put the rounded edge at the bottom. All right. Now, little trick, trip. So I want to make sure that my design lines up for when I do this, because I'm going to pull this off, right? And I am going to roll this over, and I'll show you that in a second. All right. I will go in here and go just like this. All right. This way, when I go to line it back up again, I can see that it's going to line up. All right, that's just something I do. It's a sewing kind of thing too. All right. All 
Um, you can get the jigs at Johnson Plastics and Condi. Um, so that's where I get those. I'm going to center this as best I can. I'm going to tape it down. Again, you can use your Condi's Pro Spray. You can use, I don't have Condi Pro Spray. I have a different spray. And I'll show you mine in two seconds. Mine's Loctite is the one I have. I tape it down. This one I probably would have used the spray for, but for tutorial purposes, we're not going to. Um, we're going to see how this works. Now, here's the kicker. This will not fit on my... <laughs> this is where I'm going to show you how to, how to press it twice because it doesn't fit on my jig. Or it doesn't fit on my heat press. Okay. Unless you go corner to corner. Okay. So let's swivel this around. Okay. So now we're going to see how this works. Now here's my concern. There's a little hole up at the dot up at the top here. I don't know how this is going to off gas through to the other side of the sock. I'm hoping that it doesn't, but we're going to find out together um, if this is a thing. Now you have this. You can actually do your stuff diagonally if it doesn't fit. Um, a lot of people will do that with their burr cloths and whatnot. Um, so let's see if this hockey jig is a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. So I have no idea. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I figured, you know what, we're going to do this live. I was sitting here looking at it and I was like, oh, I wonder if we can use that. The vapors discontinued. Let me loosen my pressure just a little. And who the heavens knows. So there you go. So we're going to try and see if this works. I have no idea if it's going to work, but let's do it together. Um, I, the, the sock designs actually are from Margo. And um, I know a lot of us over in the design world use Corel and Photoshop. Some use Infinity, some use AI, some use Inkscape. There's so many different opportunities that you can use for your designs. It's just, you learn it and learn it well. YouTube, whatever the program is that you're going to use, just figure out what you're going to use. Why is somebody posting about Zillow? <laughs> um, Silky Stocks has a straight jig. Awesome. Thanks, Tammy. I pressed my socks on the hockey jig diagonally as well. Perfect. The socks I get are from Walmart. They're the and one. Um, yep. You can use hardboard, um, cut it, sand the edges down. You can use um, poster board. You can use cardboard. Whatever you have, I mean, use that. Be thrifty. Here goes nothing. Whether or not, I'm scared. All right, let's pull it over here. Just because I got to lay this back down again. Okay. Kicking it old school. Okay. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to pull off all my tape. Now, I don't want to pull, pull, because I don't want this to all move, but I'm going to show you how this works. Just retape it. This is why it's probably, this is probably why I use the Condi Pro Spray or the Loctite Spray, because then I don't have to worry about pulling the tape off. And that's just key. Okay. So. I love it. It pressed beautifully. Now the trick becomes lining this bad boy up. Ah. What you want to do is literally come through here. I don't know if you guys can see me. Let's see if you can see me. Okay. You want to literally come through and barely, and I mean barely, pull this over the top. Just barely. You roll it over. Okay. This also helps you line up your design. And mind you, this jig is hot. So this little hockey part is a great handle. I just need to point out some obvious things. So roll it just out. And this is how you're going to do the gators too, guys. Same idea. Just barely roll it over. Okay. This takes a little bit of patience. And once you get going and you're good at this, Oops, so that, that would be a little heavy right there. Okay, so you just barely move it over. Okay, so far are we good? 
So that's one side. You make sure you roll it nice and over. Okay. All the way around. Come all the way around. Roll it in. As it cools down, it gets a little bit easier to move, i got to be honest with you, because right now it's hot. And as this side cooled down a little bit quicker because I was moving it. Okay, so you see how it has this edge all the way around it? So far, are we good? This is where... My extraness comes in handy. Yes, it does. My extra. Okay, so now I want my design, this design, to line up with this design. Remember? So now I'm going to come in here and I'm literally going to come to the edge. Okay, so yes, there's this wasted space, but it's because I want this to line up perfectly. Okay, Margo spent a lot of time on these designs. I wanted you to line up perfect. And if you notice, I'm sitting here and I'm shifting the sock to make sure that it lines up perfect. This is where, as, as Angie just said, this is where my extraness comes involved. Okay, I'm going to shift this to make sure that it lines up right where I want it to line up. Okay. I'm going to shift this down a little bit down here because it needs to. All right. I'm going to scoot my design down over, over just a touch so I can see it a little bit better. All right. We are lined up the best I think I'm going to do. Okay. Here's praying and hoping. Tape it down. Use your Condi Pro Spray. Again, Condi Pro Spray is repositionable. So if you don't like where it is, pick it up and move it. Okay. Pick it up and move it. These are the funkiest socks. Like, I literally, when I go look for Ashley and Margot's designs, I find the loudest and obnoxious design I can find. Okay, here we go. So this is how this is. And we're going to, like I said, I'm going to press it on the regular one and see if there's a difference in quality because one is more stretched than the other. But so far, the hockey jig for the win. All right, so now I have it all lined up. Let's see how well I do. We're going to get new protective paper. Let me just, I got to fold it. Give me one second. All right. Let me grab this. Slide her in. Get her all lined up. You guys don't need to see. All right. There we go. So now that's how you know how to do it. And you know what? You could actually do that with the koozies as well. You can make a template for your koozies if they're already sewn and do the same thing. Make your koozie stretch out just a little bit, put a jig in there, and then roll the edge ever so slightly. You could put your koozies in a jig. That's what I do for mine. I put it in a jig. And just so you can see, because I know a lot of people use cardboard. Um, I'm going to pull one of Stan's koozies out. These have a lot of give. Okay. So, yes, you can actually put them on the bottom of your sock jig. Okay. Just as such. But use cardboard. Use cardboard. Okay. So, here's this. Put it inside a jig. Because what you're going to want to do is to because everybody's worried about those seams, roll it, roll it on either side. And the jig helps for that rolling. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, cut out some cardboard, some wood, whatever the case may be of what you want to do. And they will make a perfect, um, addition. I mean, definitely could use this one if you're only doing one or two, but if you're going to do a couple at a time, because a lot of us do use cardboard, Go get some hardboard at the, the um, yep, hardware store, <laughs> Home Depot, and go from there. All right. Here goes nothing, and I have a perfect press. Holy Moses. All right. I love it. You want to see? Even the top. Holy Montana. Okay, so 
there is absolutely no edge. Check that action out. Right? The hockey jig for the win, even on the toes. So it doesn't have to be rounded. It can be squared off and you can use the hockey jig. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Pull it off and I can tell you that my design lines, and this was a tricky one, this is why I picked it. Look at that. It lines up absolutely, except for right there, but that's because it was down at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do for the future is move it up just a touch because it might've been in that little crease um, in there where I might have been sitting right in this spot. So that's why I did a little bit, but you know what? Holy tricky. And that's how you press a sock. It's super easy. You can get the hockey jig at Condi. You can get it at um, Johnson Plastics Plus um, or Johnson's Plastics. You can get it there, but there you go. So now let's see if the quality of the print is still the same because now it's gonna be super stretched on a straight jig where this was on a hockey jig. And I gotta tell you, Margo, Margo for the win right here. Okay, so the hockey jig does work. Oh, and the question was is whether or not you see the dot through. No, no you don't. You don't see the dot, so I don't have to worry about any protective paper down into that dot. Um, like I said, even the toes, Look at that. That is just awesome. Thank you for the win. Listen, I, I have to tell you, I was nervous about that because I know you guys are all looking for the jigs and you guys are really nervous about where to find them. And so I was like, oh, how do we do this? So now we're gonna line this up. We're gonna put this on the heat press. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go over it all over again, just so you guys can see. Okay, I'm gonna tape this down real quick. You don't need to see me taping. I mean, if you want to, we can. We can show me taping. Um, tape it all down. Make sure this is all in your design because I have a feeling it's a little bit high. There we go. All right, you wanna make sure. Now I did pre-press these ahead of time before, the, before the, the live because I wanted my heel to make sure that it laid flat. So I pre-pressed this, so this gave this a nice flat area. So I did pre-press and lint roll this ahead of time because the heel can sometimes pick up when you're trying to put this on. So you definitely want to do that. Again, you want to use your Pro Spray. How about it? For the live tutorial, we're just going to do the tape. Okay, so it's on there. The first side isn't necessarily the issue of where to line it up. It becomes where to line it up on your second time. What do you got? This is the straight jig that they've actually discontinued. Um, so we did the hockey jig to see if it works, but I want to make sure that the quality is still the same for the uh, straight and, and hockey jig when it comes to doing straight socks. Um, because one is a little more stretched out than the other. Now, I gotta try to fit this all in my press. So give me one second. <laughs> I don't even know if I can. Well, this will be fun. We're going to press this twice. I'm going to press this twice. Because you know what? It doesn't fit corner wise because I don't feel confident in it. I usually do when I do the larger ones. The nice part is, is the hockey jig will fit nicely on your 15 by 15. The straight jig, unless you're shrinking down your, your sock and not super stretching it like I am right now, um, you really need the bigger one unless you plan on pressing it twice, which is fine. You can definitely press it twice. I'm going to show you how to press it twice um, to where you can line it up to where you're not double pressing that side of the image. We're gonna work on that because we have to talk about that. So let's get on to that too. Um, so I did a flag and we're gonna do a flag. So here's the flag that I did. All right, it is double pressed. And this is why, and I wanna show you, I intentionally did this. Why you don't want to um, have the press overlap, okay? You literally want your press to sit at this top edge. All right, that's where the last pressing was. If you overlap it at all, you will end up with this design line, okay? For this, it might not necessarily be too much of an issue because it is a board, but because we're all professionals, that's the first thing your eye catches, okay? So, 
I'm going to get this right down into there because I think you guys really need to see this. Let me lower this just a little. Okay, you see how there's this line right here? All right, I am going to move it over here because there's a lot more light. All right, you want to take it. And what I do, slide this so it's off the edge so I can literally, I need to be able to see the edge of my press. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. I talked outside of school again. Okay. You see this line? Take your time, okay? And even my paper. All right, I want to line that edge up with that edge. Okay, so this lines up and this it so barely, and I mean barely. And you're going to shift it while it's inside. Okay, you want to line this up. And that's how you do that. Okay, you literally want to barely put this back under the heat because, again, if you have a smaller press, and this is strictly for people who have smaller presses, if you have a larger press, game on, you, you, you can do this no problem. But if you have a smaller press, you have to learn how to do a second pressing to where it's not going to overexpose it to call it something. Okay, so we don't want to overexpose the area. Um, so we're going to leave that there for two seconds. Uh, let's see. I know. How dare I, how dare I, Mark, call us a professional? We all know that I'm not. So there we go. And you guys come to watch me do the sass and be sassy and be honest. And I can't say I'm going to always make friends either. But I at least try. I do 385 for 65, believe it or not. <laughs> All right. So let's pull this up. Now I can see that it... We're going to see how well I did, okay? Holy Montana. These things are hot. All right. Again, this would be a great opportunity for you to use your felt to practice, okay? This is a great opportunity for that. So I'm going to flip this around because you got to pull off the tape, right? I will show you guys what it looks like in two seconds. So I'm doing, I do 385 for 65. And I do a medium to heavy pressure. I like it to lock. I don't want to have to fight with it, but I also don't want it to uh, be wonky. Okay. We'll roll it around. All right. So there you go. It's not too horrible. And I think once it shrinks down, it'll be fine. But you see, there's still that edge there. It's faded here because I got it right on point right here because it wasn't exactly on point and it's something you have to practice if you're going to be doing this and you have to do a double press you really have to practice this craft okay it might not matter so much for socks because when I go around and I do it again it should line up again um but we'll see because I have no idea because I don't usually piece or press socks twice all right again this is where you need to take your time and gently roll this around. Not a lot. You don't, you know, it's like a hairpin turn here. You don't want it to be, whoopsies, sorry. My bad. Okay. You want it to be just ever so slightly. Remember, you want to be extra here. It's our running term that I have with friends of mine. How to be extra. Bless your heart. I'm having a lot of bless your heart moments today. Come around the corner, around the end, just ever so slightly. You don't want a lot, okay? Just work at it. Take your time. Socks aren't necessarily hard. They're just a little time consuming because you want it to be right. Again, we can do this on the koozies as well. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. I love him. I just don't like being beat up either. I don't beat you guys up, so I don't appreciate being beat up either. Rudeness gets us nowhere, but I will fight rude back. And I can be just as sassy. Okay. All right. So there you go. You see how it's just barely over the edge? All right. 
And I, I'll go through and I'll tweak it again, especially on the lighter areas to make sure that I did get it where it needs to be. Whoops. You guys got the light in here. So do you guys see that a little bit better? There we go. See how it's all the way around the edge there? All right. Awesome sausages. Okay. So again, you want to line this up with wherever your design is. All right. Make sure it goes all the way around and does what it needs to do. All right. I don't have to move this one. That's the nice part about the straight jig. Um, I don't have to worry necessarily about corners turning and all of that happy jazz. This is a little bit more stretched than the hockey jig. Um, I do have to say that. Um, that is a difference that um, versus the straight jig versus the hockey jig. Um, I got to tell you, I'm a fan of both right now. So they're definitely working. I'm going to throw this on the heat press and I'll get right back to you. Drop it down there. How are we doing so far? Easier to move around the edges when... Yeah, it probably is. That's okay. And I don't like lines. I don't like lines either, but I have to tell you, if you have a 15 by 15, my 15 by 15 handled the hockey jig. So if that's the case and you don't like the lines, this is a winner. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. I didn't have to worry about this. So you can go get yourself the hockey jig. Um, you're not going to have to worry about press lines like that second press line because you can actually put it diagonally on your heat press and it fits. All right. So you're asking me what the size is that actually it prints at. Um, I can tell you, I shrunk this down to the design is 15. Um, so obviously if you've got a bigger press or a bigger image, or a printer, you can totally print that out, but it's it's like 15. You could probably even shrink them down further or even just use smaller socks. Um, but the method is still the same. You still wanna roll it over ever so slightly. We're gonna do the same thing with the gator. All right, again, let's see if we can master this. I don't know how well we're gonna master it, but you know what, let's do it together. Use your handle. These are just test socks, just so you guys are aware. You want to definitely try to get that edge. This is this is so tricky. I got to be honest with you. This is not something that's easy. And I know I forgot to put my paper on top. I was so concerned about this, but you do put a protective piece of paper on top. Um, but I was so concerned about lining it up, I completely forgot. But that's just a, that's a me problem, not a you problem. Um, so I'm hoping that. I lined it up much better this time and that it, you know, it, it, you could see that line. That's the nice part about pressing is you can see the lines on the paper. So that does make it a tad bit easier for when you're lining it up quite at that, that edge of your, your uh, press. Um, they're the and one and at Walmart. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Billy, for answering that for me. So I got about 20 seconds left and then we're going to work on the gators. The gators again have the same idea with my gator designs. It depends on which one you pick. Um, but you also want to print one and mirror one just because then it goes all the way on the round and we're going to press that next. Again, it's about working on that craft. Okay. So let's see how I did. We'll pull this off, bring it over here. Okay, whoopsies, sorry. Okay, so now I have it here and I wanna take my tape off gently. Um, I mean, you could rip it off, I mean, if you want to, by all means. Do what you gotta do, man. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna rip it off, what the heck. All right. So my line actually was a little bit worse that time than it was the first time. Because I probably, and I guessed at it too. Again, use your felt so that it definitely presses better. All right, so if you have a smaller press, here's my suggestion. Don't use a straight jig, okay? Um, if you have a smaller press and 
you can get the hockey jig. Get the hockey jig because I got to tell you, look, I should have moved it down just ever so slightly. This corner, I don't know if you guys can see it. My light's really just being shiny today. My light's even being extra. Um, this was perfect fit. This one, I didn't put it quite enough pressure and it was side. So there you go. But on the front side, it wasn't as noticeable. So these are where the things you want to definitely, if you're going to have to piece it together for the straight jig, that's where you're, that's where it is. Okay. Just rub it, girl. All right. So you want to pull these off, um, kind of right away. So my lines on the sides, spot on perfect. Okay. So that wasn't the issue. So here's, here's what we have decided. Okay. Hockey jig, straight jig, no second pressing for the 15s, second pressing on the 15s. If you've got a larger press, this is a mood point. Okay. But you can definitely use the hockey jig. Um, so there you go for those. And if I felt like the hockey jig, it didn't stretch it out as much as it did with this one. Um, so the hockey jig for the win. So if you can get onto either one of those websites, get yourself a hockey jig. Um, cause the hockey jigs work. You're just not going to use it in the most traditional sense of the word. You're actually going to use it going this way instead of this way, because really all you need is that amount of space. Um, and these are the, I mean, you're not going to do knee high socks. If you want to do knee high socks, you can. Um, but here you go. There you go. And this is Margot's design. Um, so awesome design, Margo. Maga Margo. All right. So that's, it does. It really looks stretched out, doesn't it? So I'm not a fan. I actually like the hockey jig. And I think that, you know what? In a pinch, it works out great. Um, can anybody notice I flipped the image? <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute and funny. <laughs> um, but so there you go. Um, this is how, I mean, my lines still came out absolutely perfect. So there's that. So now we're going to move on to the gators. Again, gators are the same way. Okay. Here's your gator design. Now this is where I use poster board. Now these are from Stan. Now I literally cut this to fit so that it would fit on my heat press. Um, for those who have a 15 by 15. Now, if you notice, Here's the design because I want this to line up with that. When I first originally pressed it, I didn't think about it. And then I had to think about it because if I were to press this the same way, I would have ended up with an image here and a line. This, at least I can make it look seamless. Okay. So this is what you want. You want it to look pretty. You want it to look the same. Okay. So, um, and actually it's this way. <laughs> it's upside down. All right. So this is how the mirror image will look when we go to press it. All right. So this will be the design once we're done. Um, right. That is absolutely true. Okay. So, um, a gator is basically a Stan has these very thin, they're very thin, like t-shirt type material that you can use to put up over your mouth. You can use them as a headband. You can use them as a hair tie. They're very, very versatile. The nice part is, is they don't have a finished edge. Why? Well, for those who have a 15 by 15, it means you can cut this down. And what I did just for the 15 by 15 is I cut it down and I ended up with this little tiny piece left. Okay. This is great for a headband. Um, and I'll show you. Give me one second. I would show you how it goes on for a gator, but this is just the piece. All right. So basically if this was the full gator, okay, it would go up over here. Okay. And it would hang down here or you, this little piece, you get a two for one, especially if you have a smaller press and it becomes a headband. Okay. So you can use it for a wide, wide variety of things. Um, like I said, this is the lighter t-shirt type material. Um, he is looking at getting into a heavier weight for me. Um, cause I want a little bit of a heavier weight for the winter time because this is great for the summer. Um, Firefighters and EMS people use this a lot. People who go skiing use these. Anybody who's sports related outside. But it kind of covers your face. But then you can put it down. It kind of looks like an infinity scarf, but just tighter to the neck. Um, so that's what that is. All right. Again, so I want my designs to make sure that they match. All right. So the first one isn't necessarily going to be the issue. It's the second one. All right. So... 
His gaiters, because they are a t-shirt type material, all right, I make these, this particular one is, I want to say it's 14 and a half by 11 and a half, the design, because this is stretched out. I wanted it ever so slightly on the bleed, okay? You definitely want it, it says like they're, they're 10 and a half. You definitely want to stretch the design to fit. And here's why. Measure your gaiters because these are an infinity. There is no seam and they stretch. You don't want it to stretch a lot. Um, I don't, I pre-pressed it a little bit prior to just to get my cardboard to lay flat and you really want to take your time. So this, I'm actually going to tape the board down. I'm not taping and this is why I made my board slightly bigger. So I could tape my board down and not this because this is so super stretchy that when you go to put the tape on, it, it does funky things. This is where also your spray would be a perfect application for it because then you can just pick it up and move it. Um, so this is, yes, you could probably use it as a hair tie. I use it as headbands. Um, there's lots of different things for it. All right. So there's this, I'm going to put this, I'm going to get my new paper, put this on the heat press, get this going. And then again, just like the socks, you want to roll it. So let's get this rocking and rolling. It fits my heat press. See. Just want to make sure that I'm where I want to be on my press. Okay, so it's on there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wait. Okay, we got to wait for it to cook. And you're going to literally, again, gently roll that image over, just like we did with the socks. Again, you could do that with the koozies, you do that with the socks, you do it with the gaiters, anything that you want to cover that seam. Okay, so keep that part in mind. Nikki, did you fold over your cardboard to make two layers inside? I did. I have two layers of cardboard, or poster board, the plain white poster board. Um, I cut it to size. There will be some bleed on your poster board, so what you can do if you want to reuse it numerous times like I'm going to, I will stick some protective paper in between there so it doesn't get onto my, my poster board. For this tutorial, I didn't, but like I have to do 25 gaiters and they're all going to be the same color. I'm going to slide a piece of protective paper that's just the same size as my board, slide it in there so that it, it protects, it actually protects my poster board so that I can reuse it. But it is two pieces of poster board. And I'll show you how it bleeds through in two seconds. And you want your paper, when you put your protective paper in, Nikki, make it a little bit longer, not wider. You want it the same width. So here's what it looks like printed. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little high right there. My bad. Okay. So you want this, you see how it prints on your cardboard, but if I go through here, you can, it sometimes has a little bit of a residue in here. So you just want to protect it. So now we're going to flip this over. Okay. I'm going to get it so that you guys can see this. Billy is on it. Billy's my man. Okay. Again, ever so slightly come across this edge because this is so super stretchy. Do not pick this up and do it. I'm going to tell you right now, don't pick it up. Okay. Ever so slightly come up over the edge because this is so super stretchy. When it gets warm, it gets stretchy. So keep that in mind. Okay. These gaiters get stretchy when they get warm. So you want to come on here. Okay. Get it all to where it's all pulled up. And I would like to tell you, you could probably make a sandwich with these and do them like two-sided, but because I could not possibly get it lined up correctly, um, I have to do it this way. Okay, so now you have the design lined up. I'm going to take this, go just like this, and flip. Okay. So, 
this I want to line it up with do I have it backwards again? I do. I just want to make sure I don't have it backwards again. Okay. So line your flowers up. All right. So that it lines up perfectly. Okay. Again, take your time. All right. So now I see this is lined up 100% the way I want it. I'm going to tape this down. Tape this down. Give a little bit maybe more love in the corners because I don't want it to shift. All right. Poster board's cheap. Cardboard's cheap. And until they make me a jig that can fit this, it ain't going to happen. Okay. So the paper over the top of the poster board and not middle. You want to slide your, your, your paper. Okay. So you want to... Two things. Slide some protective paper in under here so it fits from here to here, but is as long as, you see how my board's a little bit longer? So as long as your board. So it slides in between here because if you're doing multiple pressings, you're never going to line this up correctly. Uh, you see how the bleed is? And I left that intentionally so you could see how the bleed is. If you go to press something else using this board, you know, another gator, you're going to run the risk of this bleeding onto your gator. So you don't want that. Okay, so put some protective paper on the inside and you're going to put it over the top. So I know it seems kind of archaic, but sit there, take the time. If you're going to be doing a lot of these, just cut your pieces of paper, your, your parchment paper, your butcher paper, whatever it is to this size. So whatever the width, the width is. So for me, this is 11 and a half by 14 and a half and I'll just slide it in. I can even sometimes tape the paper down to the board, um, but there's no need for that. You can just slide it in. Um, do you pull both sides in? You're going to make me start being extra, ain't you? Yup. How wide is your poster board? Um, this is 11 and a half. Okay, so. All right, and I cut it down. I got the big poster board, folded it in half. Now let's come over here, get my paper. Let's get this on. And let's get that pressed. So while that's cooking, remember rule over your edge. Your poster board is going to be 11 and a half by for stands. I'm finding 11 and a half. Um, if you have a smaller press, you don't have to cut the gator down. If you have a smaller press, you have a 15 by 15. You don't want to do a double pressing. Just cut it. Take your rotary cutter and rotary mat and cut it right straight down. I cut mine at 14 inches, the gators are, because they're a raw edge. They're meant to be a raw edge. They're not meant to have a finished edge. Um, I do have to say I compared a vapor one to one of stands, and here's what I found. Okay, the vapor ones, you almost have to be a peanut to wear them. While they'll press beautifully, they have a finished edge, the problem is, is a grown man couldn't get it over his head comfortably. I had my husband, who's got a big noggin, try to put this on, and he was fighting with it. You don't want to fight with the gator, all right? You want it to fit nice and comfortably, and you want it to have a more one-size-fits-all. I'm not saying, you know, because these are super stretchy, um, that, you know, there's no happy medium. They are super stretchy. They're great, though, I got to be honest. Um, and that was one thing I was telling Stan is they both press beautifully. It's just the vapor ones are more expensive and they don't stretch. So there's my disclaimer. Oh, I could have rolled it over just a little bit more on that one side. I'll show you what I did. My one side rolled perfectly. My other side, I did not. <laughs> But this is why rolling it over and you want to have a, you want to have be a little extra. Now, because this is black, I could go through with a black Sharpie and hide that. That's perfectly fine. And that will hide that, that mark. But if we come over here, because I took the time, it is so much better. Okay. It lines up and I'll show it to you because we're all about transparency. All right. This is why, and I'll show you why, and this is perfect down here, okay? It's a perfect, it's a perfect bleed in through here. It, this I could have rolled over just a touch more, not too much. I could have rolled it over just a hair more, and then this would have lined up perfectly.
But in the art of transparency, that's why you need to be extra. Okay. Again, this is, I could have rolled it over just a little bit more. You could see where spots where I had it spot on and I didn't. So make sure you take the time to be a little bit more extra. Now, you asked me how to put it on. So, because I wanted my design to look like it goes all the way around, my seams will be on the side. This is what it's used for. And you make it, and you make it pretty, and you fold it in, and you do whatever you need to do with it. Now, you can use this, okay? You can come through, and you can come and make it into a headband. You just scrunch it up, or, oh, my hair's gonna be a hot mess after this. <sighs> the things I do for you people. Holy, if you, like, if you're a biker, I'm gonna try to get my ponytail so it doesn't totally go cockamamie here, okay? Get it all tucked in. This is great for under those helmets, um, under a hat. Um, a lot of bikers wear these for that. They wear it for their mouths. They wear it underneath their helmet. Again, sorry for the terrible bedhead hair I'm about to have. And I'm going to be a hot mess soon. All right. So this is how they can put it under the helmet. It kind of protects everything under there. All right. Um, so that's one use. You could take it and you can totally make it into a ponytail holder. If that was your choice, um, again, it's versatile into what you can use it for. Um, you can cut them down, make them into team headbands, whatever the case may be. Hold on, let me get my hot mess self. All sorts of extra is better. There you go. If you're looking for these Gator Designs and more, you can find them on my Etsy page at LPB Designs and more on Etsy. Um, you can find any of these designs. I have both male, female, um, but this happens to be one of my favorite. I love the colors in it. It's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Um, so there you go. This is just one of many, 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 many. All right. So I'm going to bring the iPad over see how we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you can find the gators at Coney Island. You can find your bibs at Coney Island. You can find the bird cloths at Coney Island. So here is the Sunday Sass recap. Um, we learned that Nikki can't spell or, <laughs> or has problems spelling. So there we go. We have that. And we did this full bleed bib. Okay. And it was pieced together. Normally I would not piece these together. I would just printed it off but you can definitely with a little bit of fluff hide your mark this little gadget is one of the gadgets that really comes in handy for stands bibs um just because it helps pick up where that mark is and now you don't see it absolutely stunning okay i'm in love with this design i painstakingly hand placed every single flower <laughs> um we also learned how to piece, and but we also learned how to fold over a sock and whether or not a hockey jig versus a straight jig was gonna be the route to go. I gotta be honest, I'm probably gonna start using my hockey jig. Why? Because I felt like these were less stretched out because they are slightly tapered, um, the hockey ones are, and it could fit on a smaller press, which makes things a lot easier. When I'm heating up my big press, it takes a little bit longer to heat up my heat press nation one, but it's a beast, okay? Because I have a heat press nation 16 by 20 auto clam slide out drawer one. And I love that press and I will be using that press when we do our pet stuff. So you'll get me, you'll get to see me use that press eventually. But um, how folding over the edge ever so slightly on your design gets rid of that mark. Now, if you also want to do the koozies the same way, put your koozies on a jig. You roll it over, it helps keep those controlled, and then you don't have those pesky lines that everybody hates. So, I have to say, totally in love with the hockey jig. You can get those anywhere. I feel like it did not stretch my stocks out at all like it did with my straight jig. And clearly, you can see that it did. Um, so we learned that today. We also learned how to press a baby blanket um, and how the method of being able to do it and how to piece it together. Um, 
This was the start of the one, <laughs> the chaos blanket. Um, so here's how I've started it. And we're going to continue on with that. And also my tip and trick of the day is when you're learning how to piece, start it out with felt. Okay. Make sure that you press it on felt first. Why? Because then you can test print something. You could, t you can practice your craft and how to piece it together and what methods work best for you before you actually go and press it on your substrate. Because a lot of times you guys are buying substrates that you only have enough for that particular project. You're not buying extra. Like I've said in the past, always buy extra. But if you're still determined not to buy extra, the best place to test your substrates or the prints of your substrates when you're piecing, time, temp, and pressure, get felt or even the poly, uh, the poly fabric. You can get it at Joann's, um, at Hobby Lobby. Just go looking for it. They have it on the bolt. That is a great way to test print projects. Now, we talked about in that test print project um, how you can take this, all right, and you could put this in, I don't know where my other one is. You could put it in the, um, here it is. Take this, this is a great test print. Again, we saw the line, but this, if it came out spot on perfect, you can put this in a card catalog kind of thing, in a sleeve, and then people can actually see what it looks like printed and not on paper and not on a computer screen. This is a great way to have it sitting on a table when you're doing your different uh, trade shows, um, doing your vendor fairs, and people wanna see all the other wonderful things that you make this is a great opportunity. It gives you an opportunity to press out the design, to see what, how it impresses, and it shows it off. This is a great dolly and me size um, that you can use and just literally trim it out. Um, use your, your cutter, cut all the way around it, add some Velcro straps or ties, and now you have a perfect baby bid for a dolly and me set. So there you go, your think outside box moment. Um, so as we know, I pressed this on felt because it, and this is when we all caught the fact that I spelled Lynn right here, wrong here, whatever. Um, but I did it so that we could show how you line up the design. Okay. And the best possible place when you're literally piecing a design, where to actually make your cut line in your program, whatever your program is. I can't tell you where the cut is. I can't tell you where to cut it. Um, or what tool to use. I just know a Corel is the knife tool. Um, and that's what I would use for that. So I'm going to go back and hopefully you guys have learned something today. Let's see. Thank you. Aw, thanks, sissy. I love my sister. It was. I had 251 viewers today, even if you all were yelling at me. I hope that helps. Any questions before I go? Anything that you need to see again or you want me to go through? Um, let me know. You can let me know in the comments. I always go back and I read them. I always go back and I answer them. Sometimes I forget to change over to my own name because right now I'm under sub and sublimation and more. Um, so I always, you know, sometimes I forget to go change to my own name. So if you see me answering, it is me answering. I'm the one answering the question. <laughs> Please leave a comment to show some love, please. And you know what? Um, I need to say this. We're all learning this together, okay? Always keep that in mind. And we're not here to beat each other up. We're here to build each other. We're a group. We're a university. We're all learning as one team. So we don't want to beat each other up. And and you know what? I And I probably took a little bit of offense because I was completely lost as to what you guys were saying. And I do apologize for that. Um, but here's the thing, we're going to make mistakes and that's where you're human. All right. But kindness goes a long way. All right. And uh, we definitely try our hardest. I do this every Sunday. I've been doing this every Sunday now for five months. Um, and I've only missed two Sundays so that I could go on vacation. So really there's something to be said. I'm here at 10 a.m. every Sunday learning something new. So here's what's on tap for this week. I have no clue. <laughs> here's the kicker I know Marvin is supposed to be doing something I don't know but Marvin's usually on Monday nights um I want to say he goes on about eight central time you've got Tuesdays with Todd Todd's all about your business planning he's doing his new business um and he finally got the keys to that and now he's going through and you get to watch his journey um as he opens up this new business and it's a little bit different than what he normally does so that's going to be cool to watch um 
you have uh, Amy on Wednesdays with Hail Raising, or Raising Hail, that's it, Raising Hail, sorry, <laughs> I'm just gonna love that one. So you have her on Wednesdays, and she is, I mean, last week she taught you how to make a light box um, on the cheap so that you can take those professional looking photos, so that was a really cool tutorial. So the last three, those three are all about your tutorials and learning, I am just here for the sash, you're gonna get it, one camera, one Nikki, and one sass at a time, so that's what's on tap. Here's what we're gonna be hopefully working on for next week and that is all things pets as long as all of my supplies come in if they don't then I got a bump in a week um which might end up happening so if that's the case who knows what we're going to do next week until then you guys have a great rest of your week and I hope to see you guys on the flip side until then bye